Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. This is a follow-up to my first look video about On One Photo Raw 2022, which I released yesterday. You can see at that link there. Um, in that, I did a quick demo of the SkySwap AI, which is really cool technology and I love having. And um, it's an exciting addition to On One Photo Raw 2022. I'm just going to call this Photo Raw or On One. Too long of a name to say, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. What I want to do in this video is walk through, now that I've had a few more days to play with it, and some of the, um, I, I want to walk through some examples of where I'm finding that it's working really well, and honestly, some examples of where I'm finding it a little bit challenging, uh, or challenged, I should say, and what you could do about it. So here's a photo, and I've done some minor edits here, as you can see, just kind of a basic uh, street shot from a temple bar area of, um, Dublin, Ireland from years ago. I've imported a few clouds of my own. I'm gonna go ahead and use that one here. And honestly, that's a fantastic job. It's it's absolutely just about perfect, I would say. The nice thing, of course, is you have access to the mask, and if you view the mask, and whoa, that's a really large uh, brush there. If you view the mask, you can see it's done a good job. I mean, it's a little soft in some areas, but as you know, and by the way, this is not a tutorial about how to use all the controls here. I'll come back and dive into that some more in the future, but I'm just here, I'm showing some examples of where it's working well and where it may be a little bit challenged. So for something like this, you could come in and do some refinements if you needed to, to you know, shift the edge or, or whatever, you know, maybe something a little bit like that looks a little bit better, but still, honestly, a really good job even around some of these areas like these little tree um, uh, branches and that little wire and that sort of thing. So if I go back to view, you can see that sky just went in and it looks great. And so fantastic job. Absolutely, I think, just knocked it out of the park. And that's when I'm finding photos like this that have those clear straight edges. Let me get another one. Let me pop over here. Um, photos like that that have those kind of edges are working really well. This one is another example of that. Okay, another one of my personal skies, slightly different in this case. Um, I would say it's done a really good job if you look around here. Let me zoom in. Uh, that's not really going to be enough. Let's zoom in more. Let's do something like that. You can see through here, it's done a really good job. It's tiny. It's hard to tell uh, around this little uh, like weather vane kind of thing that's on the top there. Uh, that might need a little bit of help, but I mean, honestly, it, this is a good job. If you look around these edges, I did notice right here, it looks like it didn't pick up in that little corner. Um, and um, the other thing to note, I can back out to show you this, is that if I turn this off, if you look at the sky that's there before, these clouds that are right here, they remain, whereas these other clouds are actually pretty well replaced. So if you look at that, the before and after, there it is after and before, the majority of the existing clouds are replaced. And to be clear, I wouldn't necessarily replace a sunset. I was using this as a test. But I think it's done a pretty good job of actually, even though that sky is already busy and has a lot going on, it's replaced it, except right down here. So, you know, again, you gotta be careful um, and pay attention, but specifically around these edges, I mean, I think it's done a great job. And again, that's another example of where, like I said, it seems to be working quite well in those clear defined edges. Now here's a landscape, and of course, this is not a clear defined edge, but I wanna go ahead and grab a couple of my skies, uh, or not a couple, but I grab one of my own skies and drop it in. And I think that did a pretty good job, and I'm gonna flip it. Uh, do something like that. You'll notice it is going in over the snow here a little bit. And if I go back the other way, it, it's also going over a little bit there. But it's not massively overriding all of this snow. If I turn this off, there it is before and there it is after. So again, you're going to need to do some masking in situations like this. This one's a little bit more complicated because of uh, compared to the last two because it's not a complete, perfectly straight edge. So in other words, in cityscapes where you have these defined clear edges, buildings, roofs, things like that, I find that's working really well. It's easily picking up those defined edges and slapping in the new sky and, you know, in most cases doing a, like a, maybe not perfect, but doing a really good job there. Um, this one, a less defined edge, it's, it's having a little bit of struggle there, but you know, let's be honest, um, many products would struggle with that kind of stuff. So I'm not pointing out that this is different, I'm just pointing out how this is operating on the example photos that I have. But I wanted to call that out. I think it did a really good job, but it didn't do a perfect job. And again, you've got masking tools, so you can go in there and you know maybe you would get your, you know, your magic brush here. Uh, perfect brush, sorry. I always call it magic brush. Oops, I'm in paint and I need to be in paint out. There we go. And you know, you could come in here and do these kind of things to kind of fill that up. 
uh, or fill that in. I'm not gonna mess with all that here in this video, but there are ways to correct any mistakes that, uh, and mistakes is probably the wrong word, any misses that the tool might, uh, might have. So there are ways to overcome it. Just keep in mind, you might have to do a little bit of that. And I'm gonna move on to another photo. Now this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just use the sky, uh, one of their skies. They've got a sunset here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. And it goes in pretty well. I'm gonna turn off this foreground lighting um, simply because it's allowing me to see the edges better. But I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna zoom in more than that. But if you look along these edges, I mean, that's there's a tiny bit maybe where it could be refined. But even with these little, uh, uh, you know, bare branches, you know, and this is not a, um, a clearly defined, um, what am I trying to say? It's not straight lines like in a city. It's clearly defined, however. In other words, what I mean is it doesn't have a whole lot of this tree kind of stuff. It just has that little bit there. But all around these rocks and stuff, honestly, I mean, it's, it's doing a fine job. It looks quite nice. And then you could go in again and refine it if you want to. So you have this mask just go in there. You can see, I mean, it's picking that up pretty well, I think. And again, you know, this is the first iteration of this tool. It's only going to get better. And then in here, I might would go in and maybe adjust that foreground lighting, which by the way, you can just click that little eyedropper and then pick a color. Maybe you want some of this color in the foreground instead. Maybe that looks a little bit better to your eye. I don't know. I haven't done any editing in the photo. I just wanted to show you um, that you can adjust the foreground lighting with that eyedropper among, uh, among other tools here, mountain distance and all that. Again, I'll come back and cover this in future videos. Now I want to get into something where I'm finding a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, so a situation like this, I mean, I'm going to be honest, this is going to be a hard one. And so I don't know that any tool would do a great job here. I just want to point out that it's not going to be perfect every time. And when you're dealing with reflections, keep in mind that you've got to turn it on down here. So first, let me stick this sunset sky in and you'll see what happens. It goes in there and then it goes into those two bright parts in the water. But it, 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 the relighting comes into the play in the water as well. But the sky itself is not being reflected. So if you look at the before and the after, and the trick is I haven't turned on reflection. So once I do that, I click it on, it didn't really get a whole lot better. In fact, I would argue it may be a little bit worse. Um, this is a particularly tricky uh, kind of photo though. The horizon line and all that, great stuff as I've shown you in the previous photos. But down here in the water, and you know, keep in mind, the water's dark, right? Let me turn that off again. The water's dark. It might be hard for other products to figure that out as well. Um, but if you look at that, that on its own didn't do that great. And then when you add uh, the reflection, it kind of got worse to be honest. And so one of the challenges with the reflection tool is that uh, if I click that, I, I have two adjustments here. I have a mount, I'm just going ahead and drag that to 100. It's certainly not helping. And I have shift vertical, right? That helps, but I've got missing areas over here. So I'm not picking up um, the entire reflection. And that's the challenge. I don't have a masking tool that's specific to that because this mask doesn't do that. So if I were to go and paint in and come down here, and if I want to paint the mask in over here, and, and I'm just doing a really sloppy job, you can kind of see what it's doing, right? It's not allowing me. It's, it's picking up, I'm painting in more of that sky, but it's not allowing me to extend the mask down there uh, where the mask may not be showing up. So I paint in here, and you can see in the masking view, that I've created more white, right? So white reveals, black conceals, but in reality, I'm not painting in more reflection. So this is a little bit of a challenge, I think. And again, we're version one of the tool. I'm not picking on them. Um, this is, I imagine, really hard stuff to do, to be honest and get it right. And also this one, fairly tricky because it's dark. So I just wanted to point that out. But the flip side of that is, one like this, it actually, I think, does a fairly, uh, actually a really good job with the reflection here. So if I use this same demo sky, their sunset, click it, the scenery lighting comes into play immediately. Now, the masking around these really tiny spires, that's hard to get right anyway. So just keep in mind, you may have to go back with a masking brush and adjust that. But anyway, the sky is in. I mean, I think it's done a pretty good job. You know, we might need to do a little bit of work. Let's, uh, let's zoom. Might need to do a little bit of work around some of these trees. You know, it's, it's not bad, really, honestly. I mean, that's, that's not bad. The challenge, of course, is these little spires. They are just totally, um, not totally, they're, they're being partially obscured, right? So, you know, you probably need to do some refinement there. But the reflection, I wanted to show you the reflection in this example. When I click that, that reflection actually, that's a pretty good job. 
um, that's much better than the last one. And so in this case, it's picking up the reflection quite good. And if you look at the base image, my guess is because it's brighter and it's easier to figure out what the uh, what the actual or where the reflection needs to be. In other words, what the what's water and what isn't. And so turning that back on, that reflection came in pretty good. And so that's kind of what I'm finding. Um, and to be clear, on the on the last one where it didn't get the reflection very well uh, done, it's uh, that would be a difficult image, I think, for any product. Um, the other thing to think about with On One is, of course, you have layers. And so if you really wanted a reflection or needed a reflection and it wasn't working in this tool, you could go add a layer, take that same sky, flip it, uh, and, you know, and then, uh, well, yeah, flip it downward, you know, that sort of thing, and then mask it in with uh, all the great masking tools that are in On One. So you do have workarounds, but I'm just looking at the SkySwap AI component, like how much of this AI, you know, how often is it gonna help and benefit you? And so far in my test, I found that it's, it's working really well on those straight edges, so cityscapes, so someone like me who shoots a whole lot of those cityscapes, it's working great most of the time. For landscapes, where you have a fairly defined edge like the rocky one, that's working really well most of the time. For landscapes where you have a less defined edge and you got a lot of trees and things like that, you're probably going to need to do some work. Uh, depending on the photo. Um, and then for reflections, when it's dark, like that last example, it's just not picking it up. But again, you know, the AI models, you know, they're, I'm sure they're going to continue to train and refine this stuff over time. So as you get updates and upgrades to the product and stuff over time, it's only going to get better. Uh, and in situations like this, where the reflection is very obvious, in other words, it's brighter, I'm finding that it's coming in quite well. Now again, I need to do some other things to these photos. These are just sticking in skies and not really editing. Uh, you might want to fix uh, the relighting here. You might want to adjust the reflection a little bit. You might want to play with the masking to get a little bit more specific. Not really going into that in this video. I just wanted to give kind of a you know, first impression, for lack of a better word, of SkySwap AI. I think overall, uh, this is version 1.0. I think they did a darn good job. It's not perfect, but nothing is. And there are some situations where I think you're going to be challenged. Trees where the sky goes behind them, you're probably going to need to do some masking. Darker areas, um, you're probably going to need to do some uh, darker areas with reflections, I should say. Uh, you're probably going to need to do some work there as well. And you know, overall, like I said, I think it's a solid uh, effort for version 1.0 product. It works quite well. Um, I just wanted to point out some of the situations where you might need to do a little refinement or come up with plan B, which could be, hey, I'm going to go add a new layer, stick that sky in, flip it, and then mask it in. Again, you have capability to do that in on one. I just wanted to look at how much of it is automatic, right, because of the AI. And uh, those are my examples for now. I'll come back and do some more workflow examples showing off some of these tools. But I mean, a lot of this stuff is self-explanatory. I think you'll figure that out even without me doing a deep dive. And so if you have questions, I'll do what I can to answer. I'm going to keep working with this tool and do some more comparisons and uh, more example photos. Just wanted to give you my first impressions, which are, I would say, really solid effort with this tool for version 1.0. Overall on 1.22, I mean, fantastic, right? It's just a solid product, amazing masking, great filters, so many tools, so much capability, can't really go wrong. So that's my quickie on, well, maybe it wasn't that quick, but that was my first kind of impression of SkySwap AI. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends, and mostly I just wanted to point out some things that you might want to pay attention to when you're swapping skies using this tool. It's fun, it's only going to get better, and it's already solid, and uh, hope it helps. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be really soon. Take care of yourselves, and adios.